This is Dave McCain with the Wright Tree Genealogy. We're going to the Kentucky Historical Society Museum, particularly going to the library. And I want to show you where we go online to get to this, and then we're going to take our road trip. First, we type in Kentucky Historical Society. At the bottom of the page, it gives you the address and phone number to call to verify times of opening we're going to the library in particular to do our research for genealogy and it is open from currently from Wednesday through Saturday at 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. To get directions, we click here. I'm choosing Lexington, Kentucky as my starting point. However, I'm zooming in to where the exit is off of I-64 to Frankfurt exit, which is exit 58. Once you take that exit, you start down the pathway towards town this is where the road trip footage will begin on the video we're doing another road trip this is back to Frankfurt again in this case we're going in the Kentucky Historical Society building so we better get going As you turn at the intersection to go down towards downtown Frankfurt, not too far past that intersection, there's a way to go to the Kentucky Historical Society Museum. We're almost here. We're going to stop, park, and then get inside in a few minutes. So now we come through the front door of the Historical Society. You have to check in at this front desk. The ladies have already taken care of me. Great people there. This is just the main entrance lobby. We're going to go up to the libraries. However, you can actually come in once you pay for your entry and go through the museum. It'll take you several hours to go through if you really look at everything. Now we're going to progress upstairs. Okay, so we're going to go in and start our interview process. I'll let you meet an individual here that's very important to this uh, organization. Can you give me your name and uh, what goes on here? Hi, everybody. I'm Sherry Daniels. I'm the head of Library and Archives here at the Kentucky Historical Society. Um, we've been here since 1998 in this building, but we've existed since 1836, so we've been collecting that long. Wow. Um, and in fact, um, there's a little bit of difference. Those people who come to Frankfurt to research, we like to tell people that KDLA is the official repository. We are the we are the ones that collect the other things. So we collect a lot of the stuff they won't collect. Um, so we have the largest genealogy collection here in the state. And again, we're going to find all kinds of different things here, including the original 1792 state constitution. Um, the, the tree that you see behind you, this was um, sponsored early on. Um, when we first opened, and each one of the little leaves, those are um, donors that can pay to have a loved one or an ancestor memorialized. Is that um, something someone could still do today? They still could do, yes. There are some open leaves and some open acorns, I believe, still available. Um, when you first enter, we will want you to sign up at the reference desk, which you can see right down there underneath the clock. Okay. It's really just the place that you use the material. So, We'll show you the general stacks area and how you can get all of that and pull it out here and nest at one of the tables. Um, while you're in the building though, it is important to note, it, note that we are a family search affiliate library. While you're also in the building, you have access to Ancestry Library Edition, Fold 3, American Periodical Series, and Louisville Courier Journal up until about 1940, something like that. So all of those are available while you're on site, even from your own laptop. 
Also though, don't, don't forget about our website. There are a lot of databases we have that we provide for free online to get at from home. Um, so don't forget all of those. Oh. We've got our microfilm readers over here. Um, we've got some brand new digital readers, which we're all very excited about. These are not going to be the more current transactions. So pre-statehood, pre-Kentucky statehood, we're going to make photocopies of those. Be sure to check out the Kentucky Secretary of State Land Office because they have digitized ooh, between a half to two thirds of these and they're high resolution images. You can get to those for free. They're amazing. So is that all online that you can do or do you literally go at their site? Okay. Go to their website. One thing that we have, we do have a lot of Bible records here. We have an 11 volume set of photocopied Bible records that folks have brought in over the years. There's a DAR section down here of also transcribed Bible records. Some Bible records have been transcribed into Kentucky Ancestors Print Edition. And then we'll show you some more. There's some other ways. Um, also in the surname files in the General Stacks area and in the archival collection. Okay. We have a lot of originals. Um, and kyhistory.com, you can get to some of those digitized archival originals for free. This is the website she just referenced, www.kentuckyhistory.com. This is kind of a little bit more of your, um, your lineage and immigration books, so you're going to have some DAR stuff. You've got the Mayflower silver books. We don't have the full collection, but and then Germans to America, I think Italians to America, some of the other passenger lists um, coming in more the Virginia direction. I think of this as a, a general reference. Section. Okay. And then I know we mentioned the Draper collection, or you and I have mentioned the Draper collection. Yes, we actually looked at the record last yeah. week. How many reels? Oh, close to 100 reels on microfilm. And we do have a collection of it. It's never been digitized. So they're on microfilm, but we do have a few examples in print form. These, though, there's never been a full comprehensive index done on the very book, but they've, they've attempted to do some. Each one of these, you're going to want to look at every single index because each index is different. <laughs> Are they? Oh, yeah. So so what makes that different on each one of those? I mean... Um, they've kind of lumped them by topic a little bit. Like this is the Kentucky Papers. Okay. And then you've got Tennessee and Kings Mountain Papers, George Rogers Clark Papers. Um, so that's why you get it. But the important part is once you get something that you want, it's going to give you the address for the microfilm reel and how to use that. So... Like so that's instance, the actually microfilm? That pertains to microfilm. So you would want to go to Real CC, mm -hmm. Volume 29, Page 8. So another thing to note before we leave the room, um, we do have photocopiers for people to use, but they okay. are also welcome to use their, their phone uh -huh. or a camera, just as long as they don't use flash. Access to our archival collection is also in this room, so they would just have to fill out a little white piece of paper. We go get the, the item for them. Now we're walking back into our basically our general stacks and what the library stacks, but that's basically where we're heading. And we've got map copies right as you go in the door. And copies is a loose term. For us, sometimes it just means duplicate material. So you okay. may see an original map in here. There may be some original colorized maps that are more wonderful and so yeah, we do have a couple of guides here that would uh, tell you what we have, what maps we have by county, and they're going to be chronological. So it's a quick look to see. This is a section that is not in our library catalog. We always in, we always tell people to take a look at our library catalog before they visit us to see what kind of materials we do have. So online, you can go to your catalog. Mm -hmm. But one thing you're definitely not going to find is the surname files. Surname, county, subject files. The surname, there is a surname list in our digital collections catalog, which the address is kyhistory.com. kyhistory.com. Yes, look okay. for surname. There is a, uh, there's an index there that will kind of give you a list of the ones you have.
or multiple. And, and how did these come about, generally speaking? These have been gathered over the years, a lot of years, actually. And so there are various pieces, um, photocopies from newspapers, family group sheets that people have filled out for okay. us, um, copies of Bible records. I mentioned Bible records earlier, and uh, there are quite a few copies of Bible records. For the most part, we try not to have original material in here, but sometimes people have... In, the, in these files. In these. Um, they're definitely worth a, a going over. In fact, we have people that travel from out of state just to get to these, because there's over 30,000 of them. 30,000 mm -hmm. different folders? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. As a general rule, this is our stack, so you're welcome to come back here. These are all in our library catalog, so they're going to have a listing of the titles we have here. It's always good to check our catalog by searching your name, your family name. Um, you never know what's going to f come up, either a family history or even something in the archives, because we have people that have donated like I said, original family Bibles, but not only that, photographs, letters, diaries, all kinds of family archival information that could be in those, in those collections. Okay. Um, now, I know you had mentioned state, other state records besides Kentucky. Right. We do have a hefty collection of other states. Okay. Um, but what you'll see is our strength lies in pre-Kentucky statehood collections. So up and down the eastern seaboard is what you're going to get. You know, Kentucky was part of Virginia, so we're going to have a hefty Virginia collection. So you're going to have a decent New England state representation. In fact, this whole section right here is all Massachusetts. In fact, both of these are all Massachusetts in here. Yes, up and down the eastern seaboard, we're going to have New England, we're going to have the south. Uh, Tennessee is a good one. We have North Carolina, Virginia, we have a lot of those. Wow. Areas. So, but then what you get, and we have a decent, decent for like Ohio, Indiana, because they're border states. For right. And Missouri. And so you have records related Think to that? Think about uh, war, war land. So, you know, Revolutionary War um, and French, French and Indian War, some people got land in Kentucky. But when it came to War of 1812, nobody got land in Kentucky. They got it in, like, Illinois. That's where our collection kind of fades. We don't have strong Western collections. So, Okay, um, but it's still... Basically, migratory states to Kentucky where people could Kentucky have come into Kentucky or that. literally... Bounty, as you said, bounty lands from Kentucky is mm -hmm. going like into Illinois, literally Kentucky, Missouri, yes. Illinois, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana. Those okay, are probably our stuff. okay. When they first register, because they just arrived, they've never researched with us before. We hand them a parent county formation list because we have 120 counties, uh, and a lot of our county histories that collection is arranged by county. So, so you actually have county histories. Mm -hmm. A whole section yep. in, in this mm -hmm. area. If someone wanted to go through county histories, mm -hmm. they're here. Okay. Yes. And in fact, you're going to get county histories indexes to the regular records. So some of those records may be on microfilm here, or they may be something over at KDLA. But the indexes that were usually locally produced by well, historical societies, genealogical societies, we have a lot of those as well. Also, city directories. We have a really big collection of of city directories. Some of the newer ones, like 1950s, can be on the shelf, but the older, early ones would be back in the archival collections. Okay. Index of Franklin County Cemeteries. Community Memories. Old Floyd County Families. It's all kinds of records that are available. And I'm gonna go back to her in a second because I got a question for her as soon as I get back over there. Now, did I catch you correctly? I just was down one of those aisles. Did I catch you correctly that if I look up something, I'll be able to find these books online in your index and in your catalog? That, that they exist, not yeah. the contents. But right. Yes. Okay. So that's the library catalog. When you go to our website, you want to go to resources. So something Siri has referenced several times is going to history.ky.gov and going to resources and to the catalog and research tools. When you go into catalog and research tools, there's library catalog. When you click on library catalog, that's where you can look at the books, look for books, archives, photos, those type things. That's what she's referencing here. Catalogs and research tools, uh, the very first link at the top is library catalog. So you want to click on that first. 
search for what you're looking for. So like, for instance, you're looking for marriages in Floyd County, type Floyd marriages. Okay, so the, is less better in this case? Yes. Because <laughs> yes. I actually, one of my videos that I did earlier right. was less is better on family search type mm -hmm. situations. Yeah. So it's kind yeah. of the, start with less, yeah. and then if you get too much, right. start pushing it yes. in. And right? think what kind of record that you're looking for. Okay. Um, and then we also have journals. We have national journals. We have state journals. Is that okay? Tells me we have some Oklahoma in here. So our Western reach is a little bit better in the journals than it would be in the book series. Now, when you say journals, I mean, these are more genealogically related or just literally historical? or and history. Okay. There could be inclusive, but not totally inclusive right. in each one of these aisles. Hey, well, you know, you got Kentucky. Yeah, you do. <laughs> These are general other history books. Um, sometimes you can get into some art uh, because we have a lot of antiques in Kentucky. Um, there's some poetry, so some fiction, um, but a lot of educational history, church histories. Oh, really? So there's actually oh. histories of different churches yes. formed in Kentucky yes. or in this section? Exactly. Um, and then, there's a microfilm collection in the back. That's right there. Those numbers that you're zooming in on are ones that are not in our catalog. So any number that's like that, you might even see some that are 70 dash whatever or 90 dash whatever. Those are not in our catalog yet. Anything that's MIC, those you'll be able to find in our library catalog. So that catalog, going yes. back to the point of looking up what you got in your catalog, yes, exactly. it's available to see. So one of our drawers, and as you can see, the MIC, the good thing is, once you do hit one record on microfilm for a county, once you come back here to that number, if you open up the drawer, you're going to see a lot of the records for that county. Okay. So not every single thing, but you'll, you'll see a nice big grouping of what we do have. Let's see, some vital statistics. Um, we don't have any births. That's at the Office of Vital Statistics. Uh, we were talking earlier about what makes you different. Is there, from a microfilm standpoint or records that we're looking at so far, we've walked through, is there something you want to tell me that you might have different than? We might have some extra. And the reason why too is because once upon a time, we were the ones doing the microfilming. So then they adopted it. We, we decided we didn't want to do that anymore. <laughs> and so it went over to KDLA. So we do have some things that, some things that are microfilmed that they, they don't have. And um, I can't even tell you whether they get into cemetery inventories or, or whatever for, for various counties where we do. Like for Campbell County up in northern Kentucky, we've got things like that. Funeral home records, they don't collect that. Kind really? Of thing. So you even have funeral home records if someone wanted to try county. to find one of those for each Absolutely. county? Absolutely. No, just for a few. I mean, it would just be a hit or miss to see what we've got. We were just in the other section going through the microfilm. Right. Uh, there's things, the catalog has most of that. So right. you're getting ready to show me something else. I thought I'd bring back up the camera. Newspapers we're trying to migrate. Uh, we are actively cataloging newspapers. We don't have very many newspapers. It's not a huge collection. The largest collection for Kentucky newspapers resides at the University of Kentucky, but we more than likely have issues that they may not have. It's just very random, but you know, they've tried to collect everything, but sometimes we ended up having some uh, that they didn't. Draper collection, those are also not in our catalog, but it does exist and here it is. Um, so what would you recommend if someone were to come into this one? Is it really come to your desk and ask for help <laughs> or? Uh, you know, start with those calendar series books that we showed you earlier. Those black ones. Those black calendar yes, books. Okay. Calendar book. that Cause that could search, reference to where to absolutely. go. Absolutely. That'll give you the address for each one of the reels. And there's a lot of families in there. So it's by surname. You can literally pull that out. That okay. Way. So it is alphabetically by surname. Mm -hmm. In the book. In the books, yes. So in the reference book, Each, not in not in the film, right. but in the books, it will tell you alphabetically. There, so then you yeah. know which one to grab. And you Absolutely. do have a good representative of copies yeah. of all the Drapers. We have all of them. Yeah. You have every one of we the Drapers. We have all the Drapers. Yes. If you're watching from anywhere outside of Kentucky, check check around you because I know universities have them often. So you know, think about your region. They're 
they not only cover Kentucky, but they cover a really wide range of that migration, that early migration. What is the main purpose of that book? Essentially, he's interviewed people. He was, he lived in the 19th century, so the 1800s. He was interviewing folks who lived through the Revolutionary War, the War of 1812, and those moving westward because he knew the history was being lost. Mm -hmm. So he interviewed them, either those who lived through it or their kids and grandkids. So you're at least a generation or two closer to the person that actually lived through it if not the actual witness to the historical event. So, and all of those those things that he's interviewed, those documents he's produced, that's what the Draper Collection is. So oh, great. So there's really things there that people need to go look at because oh, you yeah. may be doing this for a long time like I have, but that doesn't mean you've seen what you need oh. to see that he's done. Yes, there the, may be a very record in there that I've missed this whole time because it's like, oh, well, I don't want to look through that index. Yes. Look yes. at the index. For the okay. early European settlement period, that's a gold mine. Absolutely. Cool. Great. <laughs> oh, um, probably the last thing we do have, I know we, we are not allowed to have, you probably had asked about or thought about, the post-1910 vital statistics. So birth certificates are at the Office of Vital Statistics from 1911 to present. We, we do not have access to those. Death certificates, we do have access from 1911 or copies of from 1911 to about 1964 or so. They release new copies of those every year or so, and we end up usually getting a copy of them. So they are in microfilm that you can access those. And this is a real certificate. The copies of the long form. I mean, there's a copy of the real certificate. With the death certificates, these are all just copies of the certificate. These now, are- They're not certified. I mean, it's, we don't certify anything here. We will stamp that says that that's where you got it. If you want to, if you ask for it, we'll stamp our address on the back to say that's where you accessed it. But we don't provide like. Well, that's proof cards. enough to say you pulled it from one of your reels. That's what yeah, we're getting. That's all your stamp's going to say it came from one of the yep. reels that you were given. You used it right here. Accessed it right here. Okay. I hope the audio comes through, but I'm afraid it won't. <laughs> So I saw the original Constitution, but what's this? These are your journals. So this is your journals of the convention. So and look how early it goes, 1788 to 1792. So we became a state in 1792. You saw the finished product, which was much smaller. But this, this is the these are the journals they produced. This is their thought process to work through creating a constitution in Kentucky. And so you're gonna get a lot more crossed out sections, you're going to get a lot more wording in here, and one of the things you'll get too, though, is you'll get a list of the representatives by county. And the counties that existed at the time. Exactly. And that's another one I've been telling people about, you know, when you're doing your records, uh, some counties weren't formed yet, and you're thinking, exactly. oh, I can't find them. This is Dave McCain with the Right Tree Genealogy. I hope you enjoyed this video and consider subscribing, ringing the bell notification, and give me a big like. I appreciate it and let's continue our journey together going forward.